Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today we have with us Mark Lukes. How are you, Mark? I am outstanding. How are you, sir? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. It's awesome to have you, Mark, and it's so exciting to kind of talk to you about everything that you're involved with. I always like to kind of allow the guests um, to introduce themselves and kind of sure. explain all the wonderful things that you're involved with. We spoke many times already, yes. and, and I, I find it fascinating what you're doing. So let's let everyone else know. <laughs> well, good. Well, thank you. Yeah. So Mark Lucas, I'm the owner of Silent Marketing Solution. Uh, we are the nation's uh, premier uh, closing gift and long-term relationship tool uh, for the real estate industry. Uh, we've expanded beyond the real estate industry, but that's still our core, you know, our, our core company uh, uh, profile. Uh, started about 12 years ago. SMS is my fourth company, uh, for better or worse. I don't, you know, there's that thin line between insanity and brilliance. So I, I'm not sure which side of the line I fall on at any given day, but that's all right. Um, yeah, so I, I had owned a, a marketing agency previously uh, for about 20 years, and I had a lot of real estate agents and brokers and, and you know, in that industry who were clients of mine. This would have been in the 90s, so obviously, you know, websites, and, and that was really becoming more of the mainstream, so we did a lot of stuff like that. Anyway, um, I, I got a lot of, of agents who just said, look, you know, we're trying to figure out how to, you know, stay in touch with our clients. So I, I sort of looked at the problem, you know, for a while, but what I realized was they were always looking at it from real estate point of view. And I looked at it from a marketing point of view. And I, you know, I just said, look, this is marketing 101. It's called customer retention. You know, all industries do this. And I began to realize that in the real estate industry, that had never really been a, what a, a something they focused on. And, and it's not a, it's not a, you know, it is a legitimate thing to say that because, you know, a house is typically a long-term product. You know, an agent may not see their customer for seven or eight years, something along those lines, uh, or longer. And so how do you stay in touch? Okay, so flash forward, we built Silent Marketing Solution with the help of all these agents and broker friends of mine. And um, yeah, we've now gone from, you know, basically an idea in my mind with my help with my wife and a lot of other people. And, and we're now in 49 states and we help about 12 or 13,000 agents. And we've started to move internationally into Europe. We've got Canadian uh, customers. And the very short version of the, of the coin is if you think about closing gift on a, as a coin, let's say, side A is the closing gift itself. Typically in the past, that's been a basket of fruit or a bottle of wine or something like that. You know, something very short, learn how fast can you drink a bottle of wine, right? Um, and, and so what we did is we created two companies. One's SMS and the other is called the shopping company. So the gift itself is a membership to the shopping company, which is a, you know, members only heavily discounted website. Now, when I say heavily discounted, you know, 30, 40, 50% cheaper than Amazon, cheaper than Walmart or Hay Needle or, you know, whatever those are. Um, so that by itself is pretty cool. I mean, a customer can go in, your customer can go in and pick a, a mirror or bed sheets or stuff for their dogs or and their cats and stuff for their kids whatever is important to them to make that new so home the, theirs the homeowner gets to pick from that selection exactly right oh. and so you know again in the old days a, an agent might have given let's say a, i'll use a wine as the example well what if their customers were recovering alcoholic and this is a true story by the way yeah you know for religious their, reasons Exactly. Right. So two things happen at once. One is as the agent, you don't have to spend time going out into, you know, the shopping sphere, especially now with COVID and trying to pick something you think your customer might like. Well, maybe they will. Great maybe idea. they won't. Right. 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 So we've solved that problem. But then more importantly, well, you know, what if they in the course of their move, they break their vacuum cleaner. Right. Now, I would dare any agent to give a vacuum cleaner as a closing gift. I, I triple dog dare you, right? You cannot believe how many people choose vacuum cleaners as their perfect closing gift that they order from the shopping company, okay? So let your customer pick their own perfect closing gift. That's side A. Side B goes like this. Every time that homeowner logs into the shopping company, the entire site rebrands itself back to the agent. If there's a mortgage company or a title company involved, those logos all come up. The agent's picture comes up, all their contact information. This is, this is why we call it silent because what's happening is sort of underneath everything. You're not bombarding these customers with 
hey, I'm Sally Smith Real Estate and I just sold another home in your area and aren't I wonderful? And, you know, over time people just go, eh, okay, that thank you. And those emails get shoved to the side or whatever. What we're doing is we took the e-commerce platform and we just turned it on its head and said, look, let's utilize it in a positive way. Give the customers, give the homeowner customers what they want is a great shopping experience. And oh, by the way, at the same time, you know, the, the agent is getting that positive uh, retention. And our memberships last for years. I mean, if, you know, at the very minimum, and this is very minimum, a, a, a membership is going to be a one year. 68% of the time, our customers, the homeowner customers, are renewing their memberships after that first year, let's say. And so the, the agent is now getting all the marketing benefits and they're not even paying for it anymore, right? And that first year membership, by the way, is 59 bucks. I mean, you know, even by the most, you know, conservative of, of, of real estate standards, $59 is a very inexpensive price to get into this program and begin to get that long-term long -term relationship uh, built up. So and that was a little longer than I had intended, but there you go. There's the, there's the SMS version. So No, no, it's good. So the homeowner, what is the reason for them to keep that membership? Can they use that platform to gift other people? Like, sure, you know? they can use it. They can buy their own memberships for other people if they want. What I told people is this, is look, and I'm going to use myself as the example. I'm the owner, so obviously I use my own product. Um, when my wife and I moved from West down here to Florida, we needed a new bed. So I was, we were looking for a new bed frame and new mattress and the whole thing uh, to fill a room. And on my own website, the frame that I ended up buying was $240, right? It's a very nice, you know, metal frame and the whole bit's great quality. Uh, that same frame was $500 on Amazon and about $490 or so on Walmart. In other words, what the customer, what the homeowner customer is initially getting is a website that has 30, 40, 50,000 products for them to choose from. And all of them, you know, almost without exception, are gonna be massively discounted compared to every other website or store out there, okay? That's what attracts them initially, or that's what it would attract them, you know, to keep coming back over and over and over. They want the prices, right? So the fact that there's also a marketing benefit for the agents in that is just icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. so but could they actually continue to buy the discounted items for themselves did you mention absolutely that? yeah can. absolutely oh, oh yeah the Christmas the gifts and and right and is yeah. there a shipping delivery included like for the items it, like if they wanted the, to send it yeah somewhere? on the vast majority of the products shipping is included the you know the prices all reflect that you know there are a few items like for example you know iphone cases or something where it's only seven or eight dollars Sorry, I can't include free shipping on that as much as I may want to. It's just not possible. They're, the items are too cheap. But yeah, I mean, if, once that homeowner has that login, once they have that, that way to get into the shopping company, they're free to come back anytime they want. I mean, our average homeowner customer comes on the site three or four times a month. They buy something every six, seven or so weeks, whether it's for themselves or for somebody else. And every time they log in, that agent's information is right there in front of them. They're getting their, you know, their weekly or their biweekly emails that are all branded back to the agents. Every time they buy something, the, the, uh, the invoices are all branded back to the agent. So it's, it's just a good, clean, slick system that is very effective. I was, tell, I was telling my wife and my sister was there too, and I was telling them about your, this company. And because I found it fascinating because it's such a... Like we always go through houses, right? I don't know about you. Like I've been, it's my, you know, a few houses already and I get gifts and, you know, at times I got a chandelier um, and at time I got something else. So the fact is that the, the, the opportunity of automating that, yeah. you know, like <laughs> the, the life of the agent gets so much yeah. easier, right? And you're oh, actually, absolutely. the consumer experience is so attractive. You know, I would work with that agent long term. I would refer people to him because they're giving me such a ability um, for customer service, right? Like for that added perks. Yeah, we. I mean, we've had brokers that have who have you know brought themselves and maybe the, you know the the maybe their agents underneath them or whatever. We had one broker in particular and said, "Yeah, I used to I used to send off my secretary, and every time we had a closing, I send my secretary off, and she'd find some gift or whatever." And so he, he eventually started using our, our product and, and 
he goes, wow, my, my secretary can actually stay in the office and do the other things she should be doing besides running out every day and or whatever, you know, every day or two going to get a closing gift. It's yeah. like, it, you know, just the time savings, the, the simplicity. I mean, uh, you know, from our website, you can purchase your gift card and your, and your membership card for your customer as you're sitting down at the closing. Let's say you forgot. I got, you know, I crap, the closing's here and I got to get something I forgot. We guarantee that email will show up to the customer's phone because part of that is, you know, get a phone number for the checkout process and we'll guarantee within two hours. Now we try and do a little quicker than that whenever we can, just depends on the day. But I mean, think about it. If you sit down at a closing, it's going to take a little more than two hours. Typically it could take three or four, depending on the complexity, but you know, typically two hours would be about the minimum. You could go through all the paperwork. So that customer, even if you forgot right up until that moment, they'll get their closing gift out there on their phone before that closing awesome. is done. And that's cool. That's mad cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned, you know, it was an idea that you, you, you thought about and then it created this opportunity and you're helping thousands. Um, that idea you created in your imagination, right? Sure. Like you put it in there. So is this something that you were playing around in your imagination for a long time or was it a quick nudge and you say, Oh my God, like this is, Oh, like the light. Yeah. Bulb. yeah. So the aha moment it's, I, I always go back to uh, what was it? Einstein, I think. And I, I'll probably yeah. get this wrong and butcher, but Einstein said, you know, I had, I had the, what is it? The, the, the genius moment for one of his theories. I don't remember which one and instantaneously, but it took me 20 years to get to that moment of the instantaneous. It was probably kind of something similar. No, I, I just, I had all these customers, you know, again, all these real estate customers and they, and they, I just kept hearing the same problem over and over like, oh, well, okay, we got websites and we've got this, we've got that, but we still don't know how to, you know, get our older customers back. And I had a, a customer who out of Maine, uh, up, up in Maine there, and, well, up for me, down for you, because I know you're in Canada, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, and I guess she hadn't, she had sold this house and she saw the customer like a year later or two years later, whatever it was. And she says, oh my God, you know, I've, I've had a kid and, and, and the agent just had not been able to keep in touch with her. I mean, and again, that's not an unreasonable thing to say, right? You got to, the agents have to keep going as much as the homeowners. Do. And, but anyway, so I was talking to this agent and she goes, yeah, it turns out she had a kid. They were actually, they were only, they had only been in their house. I don't know, maybe it was two years or something, but because of all these changes, they had already decided to uh, get a slightly bigger house, you know, whatever. And they had completely fallen out of contact to the point where they ended up using another agent. It was a friend of a friend or something along those lines. And I thought, you know, that was sort of proof positive that, you know, if, if an agent can stay in front, you know, of their customer in the long term, it's vastly superior to, to anything else. I mean, you know, retention rate in the real estate industry, and you can ask any broker this across the planet average retention in the real estate industry is around 14%, right? I mean, in any other industry, there would be wholesale changes to the way the industry interacted with their customers in the long term. The real estate world just never did. They kind of got like, okay, like we're cool. You know, we, we can deal with it. And it's like, no, don't, we got to get agents over that hurdle of thinking like that, that they have to get up every morning and fight and claw and scrape for a new customer. And it never, ends for them from the time they become an agent to the time they retire that's been the, the modus operandi let's say our program we just said wait no 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 there's a better way to do this guys and that was where you know the aha moment came from but it did take a long time to get it you know where it is today i mean it's the the shopping company has gone through several incarnations of of development so is the silent marketing solution partnerships we, partnerships exactly you know, we have our own strategic partner program where you know, our partners will, will, whether they're in title or mortgage or, you know, almost all the states now, um, you know, they'll work with agents and they'll work with us to try and help, you know, close deals and all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, the aha moment was probably relatively quick. The, 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 uh, what the, the ability to, to build the infrastructure took years. I of mean, course. I you know, never ended wow. actually. Well, I've been, we've been working on our platform since 2016. So I totally can relate how it's, um, it's definitely time consuming. So was this, yeah. are you think, are you considering opening it up for other industries? 
you know, we have had some other industries come in. So for insurance has come in from time to time. Uh, we had a couple car dealerships uh, that came to us and said, we would really dig this. Is there a way to incorporate it into the auto world? Um, you know, yeah, obviously I would take on any industry where I think there's a genuine collaboration that's that's really usable. I, you know, if someone came to me and they, we even had an oil and gas company one time said, hey, we want to buy a bunch of memberships for you know, our, our field workers, you know, the guys get car hearts every year. We want to give them something different and have our logos and all that. I was like, that was cool. There are some industries, look, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a business guy. I understand there's industries that it may just not fit. And if that was no, the ones that fits. Yeah. But for the ones that fit, yeah, we, we can work with a lot of industries that, that is it open. Yeah, absolutely. Like now, right now, like uh, somebody from another industry could come to you and say, hey, let's do this. I want to sign up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, again, we've done, oh, sorry, go ahead. So sorry, the branding and everything uh, uh, is about real estate though, right? Like the emails and everything. How does that work? Then? Well, right. But so the way it works is let's say, and, and I'll use an example. So let's say someone from insurance came and said, Hey, I dig this. I want to start using, you know, I want to start using SMS for my customers. Mm -hmm. When we're building their, their online profile uh, for the shopping company, you know, we're dropping in pictures, we're dropping in logos, we're building custom oh. colors. The site oh, is you're building the whole uh, landing oh, yeah, page yeah, 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 yeah. based so on the big we're customer. We're just layering in all the information at in the back end of it. And awesome. so when that customer logs in, they're going to see whatever we plug in. So what we tell, with, and again, we use an insurance agent is, look, here's your picture. You know, here's the space. If you've got your logo, let's say you've got, let's say you're part of, I don't know, Allstate or something. I'll make something up. And then you've got your own custom logo. We can interchange those logos. We There's a lot of okay, flexibility good. we have. So. You know, when, when you log in, and, you know, if you go to silentmarketingsolution.com, there's even a little slider bar that shows what the page looks like kind of a before and after somebody logs in. But keep in mind, those colors are 100% custom to whatever the, whatever the customer Good. is looking for, whatever the agent, let's say, mm -hmm. is looking for. Mm -hmm. All the logos, everything. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty <clears throat> slick system and it works really well um, awesome. to, for that customer ability. Awesome. And for you, was this the first... Um, I know you were in business for a long time, right? Um, yeah. Was this a first platform that you created or what, or what, like what kind of experiences you had in the past when it comes to developing platforms? Yeah. I mean, this is probably the first one I built from scratch. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the course of my marketing career, um, you know, I had a, a small team and we would build, let's say websites or platforms for people, but this took on an entirely different level. I mean, to, to build, the initial incarnation, I mean, I, oh man, that's been too many years ago. I'll, ne I'll never get the number right, but it was something like over a hundred hours or two, I don't know, whatever, 120 hours of development time. And then it went through countless updates and changes. And then in 2000, what was it? 2016, we kind of scrapped a good chunk of the, of the, of the back end and started from scratch because we could see we needed some new, some new areas. So the development of this company, and I'm going to say company is more of a broad based thing, has been probably the most complex I've ever I've ever dealt with personally, um, because there's just so many things to think about, you know, in, in the because you remember, we have two different customers, we have, let's say a real estate agent is one customer, and then we have a, a standard e commerce shopper who's the other, well, they require very different bits of information, they require very different views of how or they're different how they view the websites. So that was a challenge. It was a real challenge to, to sort of be able to, you know, look at two different sides and figure out a way to, to interact conveniently with both of them. But I think we're pretty much there and, you know, never always hundred percent there, but it's you know, okay. we're 95% there or something like no, that. You're, you guys are doing great. Um, you know, and uh, you just keep progressing because yeah. there's going to be new ideas, new features. Um, yeah. And you're, you're probably going to be looking at it going global as well, right? With this. Yeah. Yeah. So we've even started to do, for example, like on the SMS page, and we're doing this, we're getting ready to do this on the shopping company as well. Um, we're doing multiple languages. We're doing multiple countries. We're going to be doing all kinds of really cool nice. stuff. We started with Spanish because obviously Spanish in America, even Canada is a very common language, but we're in the process of adding French. Um, and we're probably going to add probably going to add Chinese, um, the traditional Chinese, primarily because of our, our West Coast agents. A, a lot of them speak, you know, they're bilingual in Chinese or Japanese or, you know, Asian. And those aren't the same languages, obviously. But, um, you know, that Asian culture is very much felt in the West. 
So we've got a lot of agents who do that. But yeah, that's all long-term stuff. We're just going to keep plugging away at it, making it more and more convenient. Were you always the inter- entrepreneur uh, spirited, like yeah. entire life or? Probably. I, you know, I, I affectionately say my, my first company was when I was eight. And I, I had a little lawn mowing service. I had four clients. I made $5 a week from each of them. And this would have been in the 80s. So like 20 bucks a week was real money, you know, especially to a kid who was, you know, eight years old. I mean, like, whoa, I could go to the arcade and spend my, you know, spend my brains out. You know, none of my friends had money. So I don't know. There was always something in me. I did corporate when I got out of college for a brief time where I went into the ad agency world and got involved with, you know, different ad agencies and tried to learn. But I don't know. I, I maybe I'm just too confrontational. Who knows? I don't know. I just, I, I like building. I like watching something grow. And, you know, that's not to say there isn't a lot of frustration and a lot of concern and, you know, sleepless nights and the whole thing. Every entrepreneur will tell you that. Um, But the downside of building a company for me personally is, you know, secondary by a, a far margin compared to watching your baby grow, you know, coming up with that concept and, and just pounding away at it and, and seeing if you can fix it and tweak it and, and get people to like it. Um, SMS was one that was, what, probably fairly easily um, adopted. Again, it was so, it, it, the irony of it is for the agents who understood it early, they just got it. It was a piece of cake for them. The agents who'd maybe been in the industry for a while or you know, didn't understand exactly how it all worked, you know, we, we had to fight to get those, those people involved. But the adoption was really quick. I mean, we started, I was living in Utah at the time. And within, I'd say a year, we had probably a thousand agents. Uh, maybe it wasn't quite that many, it was more like 800 or something like that. So, and it was by that time it started to creep into Colorado and Arizona and Nevada and Idaho and those surrounding states. And then eventually it just sort of took off. And suddenly it was like, whoa, we've got customers in, you know, New York and Maine and, you know, Washington state and Oklahoma and, you know, places I'd seen on a map or maybe it only been too limitedly, but they just came out of the woodwork. It was just something they latched onto. And that was cool. So that's excellent. And then for, did you ever work like ever have a, a, a job nine yeah, to five? I- Work every day. No, <laughs> no I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't consider entrepreneurship I work. <laughs> I don't consider business work. So that's why. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Uh, yeah. So I did work briefly in, in the marketing world. I worked for a couple agencies. I worked for a print shop for a while. Um, that was pretty early on. You know, so I, yeah, I did the nine to five thing. It wasn't very long. I mean, again, my, well, two things happened kind of at the same time. I was working for a print shop that was sold. Um, the owner had had it for years. He eventually sold it to some new owners and those new owners and I didn't see eye to eye on how things would be done. What it really came down to was I ran the place and the old owner went off and played on his, you know, on his boat or whatever. And so when those new owners came in, they wanted to take over and redo everything that I had spent years kind of building. So I was an entrepreneur, but I was getting paid a salary for it. Um, But, and so that was just a lot of conflict um, between, you know, they, they were doing some crazy things, but what did come out of that was two very different things. One is I had a lot of customers at that, that print group um, just go, look, like if you're going to go, let us know. Cause we don't like these new cut. We don't like these new owners. Like they, these new owners were not very user-friendly. So to say, and I'm not trying to beat up on them. They just have their own ideas on how to do things. And that's fine. Um, so I said, well, look, if, if I'm going to split, now's the time. Like I've got just all these people who want to so, I was literally, I started my ad agency. I quit. I started my ad agency the next morning and I had a built-in base of several hundred customers. But what are you thinking? Were you thinking about self-employment? Yeah. I, again, I've always had that entrepreneurial spirit. I, I'm, I'm very much, I want to build. I want to grow. I want to, I like people. I like talking to people and working with people. And I, and it's exciting. When I, even when I'm doing, let's say marketing or something for somebody else, I love to make sure it works. I love to see it affecting them in a positive way. I mean, if their business is growing and it's even in a small part, the marketing that I was creating, yeah. that was great. It's I amazing that. feeling. It is priceless. It is. Right. Like phenomenal. Yeah. And, and so I guess I've always had the entrepreneurial spirit. So it's always been in there, whether it's, whether I even recognize it or not sometimes. Um, but you know, the day that I said, well, okay, look, I'm, you know, we can't do this anymore. Like, you know, the owners and I just were not getting along. 
And oh, by the way, I've got all these customers just going, please, if you leave, just can we go with you? Well, that makes the oh, job a lot easier. Yeah, of you know? course. Yeah. You know? when, you, when you were doing this and going about in entrepreneurship and business and stuff, did you have doubt and worries? Did you did you find yourself at times thinking, oh, man, what if it all falls apart? Like, did you have those kind of thoughts, feelings? Every day. I still have them to this day. I don't care how big your company. I mean, I have no illusions. If the company ever started doing 100 million a year or something, sure, a lot of that gets washed away. But that's just the part of being an entrepreneur in some degree. I mean, I'm not sure there's no matter how successful a company is or, or is projected to be or whatever. There's no small business owner. There's no entrepreneur that doesn't in the back of their mind go, yeah, but what if like, I got to keep, I got to make those adjustments. Cause you know, again, I'm going to use the real estate industry as the example. It's kind of a finicky, a finicky industry. Like, yeah, you've got the hot product right now. Um, that could change tomorrow. There's no way to know, you know, you, you always have to be on guard and looking and making sure you're going to where the, where you think the industry, let's say, it doesn't matter what industry, your chosen industry, whatever you're supporting, you know, where is that industry going? Where is it going to be two years from now? Are you going to be there with it? Or are you going to get left behind? You know, that's an easy trap to fall into where you say, hey, I'm kicking butt and taking names now, but um, what about three years from now? What about five years from now? What about 10 years from now? It, you know, you, you've really got to be looking down the road all the time. It never ends. There's a there's a, a famous quote um, from uh, I don't know if you know him Leland, Leland Van De Waal, I believe um, he says well. you know he says let us not look at look back at anger like yeah. the past and nor for, forward with in fear yeah but around us in awareness yes. Absolutely. So you, you want to put your focus. I know everybody does this. Like we, yeah. we tend to just, we're just conditioned that way to do. We're right. always like, what if, you know, we're always looking at the worst, but right. um, if we just be, be aware about our, what's going on around us and really right. just take advantage of the now as yeah. beautifully as we possibly can, it's going to work out, you know, it's just, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you are a hundred percent right in that statement, you know, but it, I probably would push back a tad going, yes, you have to believe that it will work out. Right. I mean, there, as an entrepreneur, you, you, if you wake up every morning going today's the day, it's all going to fall apart. It'll well, eat your life. But never funny thing is majority right. do like that. You yeah. know, it is just naturally, they just right. feel like anything can go wrong because it's business. Right. Anything can right. fall, fall apart. Right. Sure. But you know, that's where energy goes when you put pressure, when you put focus on something like that, that's where things start happening. So, so. I, I have this, this story that I tell people about, about marketing and it, you know, again, marketing is a very funny industry, but in the same day, I, I had a customer, this is right when I started my company, I hadn't hired employees yet. I was still doing all the work or all the design work. And, uh, I, so I went, I had this customer and I went into their office. They, they'd given me these projects that I needed to try and get done for them. And in the same day, in the same hour, by one person, I was called, and I won't use the pejorative that he used, but I was affectionately called an idiot. There was another word in there. <laughs> we took, and that I was the worst graphic designer in the world. I should just quit now and go bury my head in the sand. And an hour later, we were in his boss's office and he was like, you're brilliant. How can you, why don't we just hire you? Blah, 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 blah. That was in the same day within the same hour. Now that is an emotional roller coaster that a lot of people just can't do. And, and maybe again, that entrepreneurial spirit, but I could have let it affect me one of two ways. I could have just gone and buried my head in the sand, or I could be, you know, up in cloud nine over here and never believe anything is going to go wrong again. And the honest truth is it's always somewhere in the middle, you know, in, in, in the entrepreneurial world and the business world, that's, that's just the game. You got to find that middle ground. Mm -hmm. I found it like for me, for example, like when I focus on the, what I want, like what yeah. I desire the outcome, I'm more towards it. Like it just yeah. feels like I'm gravitating towards it. Um, yeah. like an energy field, you know what I mean? So, and I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the past I'm over 20 years in entrepreneurship and I, and that's the basis of what I do is right. because I want that suffering to decrease. So what right. happens is I remember 
waking up and thinking about the day about all the things that needed to be done and yeah. all the things that could go wrong. It's just, you're, it's called oh, a, yeah. a monkey mind, right? Like your mind is like yeah. going like a thousand. Yeah. As soon as you wake up in consciousness, yeah. you're like, it's going everywhere. Boom, boom, right. like ping pongs. And I found that creates that anxiety that creates right. that feeling, right? That vibration. But when yeah. you focus on what you want, the vibration gets clearer. It gets yeah. more calmer. Your mind gets calmer. Right. And I found it uh, a lot more beneficial when we try to control what's going on in our thoughts. But, right. but uh, that's yeah, great. We, we used to call it, and again, I'm probably dating myself a little bit. We used to call it desperation mode, right? Oh. Where you're <laughs> yeah. desperate to solve ah. what, you know, a yeah. bazillion problems. And yeah. it, it comes out of you in a way that other people can see, if, you know, it affects you literally physically, the whole thing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. you you've got to have what? You've got to have that positivity. You've got to have that, 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 you know, what that drive to, you know, the dreams, whatever, you know, again, there's a lot of, use, you know, use whatever metaphor gets you going. But, um, yeah, it, it, you, if you don't have, again, if you don't have both, if you're not looking down the road and you're seeing the good and you're, you're trying to achieve those goals, however small they might be, um, it's going to drag you down. Conversely, you know, it does get easy to get into that pit and you got to find a way to drag yourself back out of there too. But I don't care what your dreams are. If you, you got to, you know, you got to try and go for them. You know, you at have some point. to, you have to, yeah. that's the way we're developed. We're designed that way. We're creative yeah. beings. We have to be going after it. And you know, it's, yeah, it's, you it's mentioned positivity. Words, like, maybe, Sorry. Yeah. And, and maybe, and maybe, you know, in, in probably in, in millennia past the, the, uh, the, the, the ambition was simply to get, how do I get up the tree and get the apple, you know, yeah. type of that. Exactly. That was yeah. What got to that yeah. Next step. At and, that and awareness we, level. Right. So we, exactly. we keep increasing our awareness level. Like right. every, everything is here, you know, it's just right. our awareness keeps increasing that we start right. finding out better and b bigger things. And as we progress in the future, like 500 years from now, who knows what our awareness level will be at? Oh, absolutely. Right. But how do we yeah. get to that awareness of if we don't push ourselves, if we don't have right. big, beautiful goals, if we're not going after things that scare us, we're not going to increase that. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll do it, but very slow. Right. Uh, right. So that's the point yeah. of this, this design we have is that we need to go after that target. Yeah. And yeah. really, and success to say success is not like a secret, you know, like, or anything like that. It's just a system. Right. You know, you have to be like you yeah. mentioned positive. And I want to ask you about that. What do you what do you do to remain positive? Because, you know, that vibration of positivity sure. uh, brings better results. So as an entrepreneur. So what do you do? Do any practices to keep that higher? Yeah. So I, I, I'm well, I have several different things all at the same time. Obviously, I still have my dreams and ambitions, even after, you know, I'm, I'm coming up on 50 and, you know, you never lose it. Yeah, never, um, yeah. And some of those are, you know, it, it sounds almost cliche. Some of those are maybe materialistic. Like, you know, yeah, it's okay. I, I saw some boat. I'm like, Ooh, you, I'm have to, a, you have whatever. to have that emotional connection yeah, yeah, yeah. to materialistic like, things. You know, I see we live near an airport and, you know, private yeah. jet goes off. I go, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I can I, get there. I like that, you know. I that like that jet. look good on me. You know? Yeah, exactly. I can wear that private jet. No sweat. Yeah. But, you know, then there's, again, the reality kicks. You got, eh, you, you got to be making billions. But anyway, no, um, stop that reality. Get rid of it. <laughs> you focus on that jet. You'll get it. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, yeah, you will again, but there's a reality goes, okay, but you better put some steps in place, man. If you're going to get there, because you know, that's, that's, a, but that's sometimes a that reality is a conditioning of our past results and, sure. and situations and environment. So right. they're not real. They're not really real. They're kind of fake. Yeah. Um, um, ideas that we have. And sometimes we think of those past experiences and we right. determine what we're going to experience in the future. If we remove that past yeah. and, and not think about it and not put energy and just focus on that, you'll see how it starts forming, how it starts yeah. happening, you know? Oh yeah. 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 So, yeah. So um, no, I agree. Um, so anyway, so, you know, some of those materialistic things are fun and, you know, go get a new car, or yeah, go get whatever, get it. but there's a lot of just little things. So, you know, I wake up in the morning and I just go, you know, today's the day I'm going to get, you know, a new customer or today's the day I'm going to have some positive interaction with somebody. You, it's the, I always say this and I say this to my employees, the big steps are fun. You know, the big steps, you know, you, when, again, you know, you don't have a jet and tomorrow you have a jet. Okay, great. Yeah. That's wow. That is so cool. But yeah. It's the day-to-day -day steps that I find impact me a lot more. 
our interaction right now is fun and we're, we're having a great conversation. I'm going to take that and go, Hey, this is, this has been a good day. Or, you know, I've got some new customer in some city. I've never, we've never had a customer in or something along those lines. That's it. the small steps. The small positives can sometimes add up to so much more than the, than the massive, you know, grandiose things over the course of, let's say five years or 10 years. I, I don't remember who said it, but somebody said, I mean, Bill Gates or something, but said, it's amazing what you can't achieve in one year, but what you can achieve in 10, right? And I always thought that was kind of profound because a year goes by so quickly yeah. for, for all of us. And you've always got these grand dreams to go, but then the first year, and, and, and that's the point in which, especially after a year, you go, well, I didn't achieve some grand dream. And so it's been a year and maybe I had to give up. Okay, no, take the small dreams in the first year or the first year or two. And those very quickly begin to add up to the point where 10 years later, you get all everything you've ever dreamed about. And so I've always liked that one. The small stuff, I think, counts for me a little bit more. Yeah, And you know what you could do with the small stuff that I do is that the small wins, I that feeling you get from the small wins, yeah. that feeling you produced it. It yeah. was produced because of the circumstance that you went through. Right. Right. Very quickly, a negative situation could put you in a very bad type of mood, but yes, bad type of energy, bad type of vibration. So what I do is the little wins, I try to prolong it as much as I can. Sure. So what I do is I take that and I keep prolonging it into minutes and I keep doing that as time progresses, you start your brain, like your system starts focusing on those positive things more. Yeah. So you're, you're a guided missile basically, right? So when you're yep. guided there, you start experiencing more yeah. of those in your life. Exactly. Like it's right. so incredible how we're designed, how we're put together, yeah. that we can literally create what we want to create right. in our environment by doing these little things. Um, yeah, and, and even just being open to them. I mean, some yeah. people see, some people have victories and they don't, they're not even internally yeah. looking for them or they, they can't yeah. even see them. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they've been pulled down to a level that's not good. So yes. just being open to those little victories is, is so crucial so to super. most people, you yeah. know? And that's yeah. what hurts. You know, I see, I see a lot of entrepreneurs. I see a lot of people that are starting to go in there. You could just hear it. Um, they're, they're in that force mode. Yeah. Like they're forcing growth. They're forcing success. Yeah. They're forcing more customers. They're forcing uh, more, more sales, whatever the case might be. Right. Because of that force, because that's just the way they see everybody else doing it. Right. Like, yeah. uh, but they don't understand there's so much of that power is within them. If they focus mm -hmm. on inside, they can start shifting that experience. They can start yeah. shifting that persona, that perception right. of life right. and business. And once yeah. you start changing that perception, that's just the entire world starts yeah. shifting. Right. Yeah. It, well, and people just are naturally attracted to that. Yeah. I mean, again, customers are, you know, they can tell, you know, can, yeah. people look like customers or not. People can tell when they, if you go up to somebody and they're in a bad mood and they're just torqued off about whatever, yeah. you can sense that it's not like yes. it's a big mystery. No. So when you're positive, your customers are going to come to you even faster. They're going to, they're going to enjoy being around you. You're going to be in a position where you're accepting of them. It does make a lot of difference in, in just your day-to-day -day interactions. Yeah. And then, you know, it's then, so true. Yeah, yeah, because it's really we are community. We are able to communicate without words, right? We're, we're our intuition, right? Like our, our vibrationally, you could be standing, you could be walking by, I could just tell, I could yep. feel what you're what you're feeling. Like sometimes you're in a parking lot or in a, in a lineup, you feel someone staring at you. Look back, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those guys. It's because oh, yeah. we're, it's, we're de de designed that way that we can pick up right. so when people are selling, if they're not genuinely caring about that person, if they're not right. genu genuinely out there to serve that person and right. trying to give something to them and help them in any way, that customer, whoever they're dealing with, they'll pick it up. Even if they don't want to, they won't yep. even know how to explain it. They'll yep. just say something about this guy, man. <laughs> like, I, I love yep. what he's talking that, about. I yes. love what he, I love what he has to say. I want to give him business, but there's just yeah. something about it. <laughs> yeah. And it's not, it, you know, we could all be standing in a, in a, what, a grocery store line. Yeah. You can just, it's like, there's something about that couple over there that's just, yeah. oh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> You know, and you go, eh, I'm going to take a step back. I yeah. think I'm going to let them <laughs> I go back in the line. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go to the back of the line. Let, let them put their lettuce on the, on the car or on the belt or whatever. Oh, yeah. Man. It's exactly right. And, and the more you can, 
the more you can, what, um, exude confidence, exude happiness, and exude the positive yes. aspects of life, yes. the more life just sort of seems to want to give you, you yeah. know? It's just the law of cause and effect, you know? It's just yeah. the... The more you're out there, the more you're doing, you're giving higher vibration. You're only going to get stuff in that area. Yeah. Um, I've seen incredibly amazing, beautiful things happen in my life. I used yeah. to hear about people. I had, I didn't have an open mind before. I used to hear about people. I thought it was like, what the hell are they talking about, right? Yeah. But then when situations happen in my life, I said, you know what? I'm going to open my mind up. I'm going to check it out. When I did, it just transformed everything, even business. So that's why yeah. I'm in this big uh, fire to kind of bring that awareness to, to entrepreneurs and especially yeah. people that are going into, because COVID brought a lot of uh, people yeah. going into business, trying to increase their income, right. trying to right. add more sources of income. Yeah. But if they go with the wrong mindset is generally right. like they're attracting stuff that doesn't work out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, COVID changed. I mean, I think, I, I think you could make the argument that COVID will have changed business forever, yes. or at least in the, in the near future. I mean, yeah. I, you know, nothing changes forever, but yeah. um, you know, at the same time, it's like, whether we meant to do it or not, you know, I built the perfect closing gift for the COVID world. I just, yes. cause it's all virtual. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Couldn't it's have like seen you it had it planned from, from right, right, day right. one. Yeah. Yeah. It all came together. Yeah. Uh, you know, the stars and the moons, but you know, that was 12 years ago. Nobody saw COVID coming. So I've had, I've been working, you know, I kind of like you, I help small business owners whenever I can, cause I've been at this a long time. And, you know, there were people who said, you know, a guy that I know uh, in Nevada and he said, well, okay, I've got this idea for this COVID business. And I went, wait, slow down. The, you know, are you out of work? What, you know, as I, I had to get the whole background. And so he gave me his whole background first. And I said, okay, you got some money saved up. Yeah. Okay. You're good to go there. Cause if you go out in a COVID world now with a COVID idea, when, you know, hopefully COVID will be gone in the next, well, it won't be gone for a while, but at yeah. least minimized, I guess, yeah. a better way to say it. You know, your, your company has to adjust to that. Are you going to be able to adjust with it? There was just all these nuanced elements of, of what COVID has changed. And, and so we, him and I kind of worked through it. And I actually has a pretty good idea, but um, I'll, you know, that's a, another conversation for yeah. another time. But, um, and, and I think he'll be okay. And I think he's got that kind of mentality that we're talking about, which is, you know, you got to be positive. You got to get out there and talk to customers. Not, but I was, you know, I'm pretty blunt at times, with, particularly with newer business owners, like get ready, man. Cause you're going to get slapped around. Yeah. Like you got to take those beatings too. And you got to yeah. figure out a way to turn them. Cause again, you'll just get into a hole you can't get out of. Yeah. So get ready. But you, you know, know, you know, the ultimate power a human being has the ultimate, ultimate power that we possess, that all science theology, like you always hear it. Yeah, yeah. They always say that, you know, live from inside out. Right. That's the power we have and not yeah. from outside in. Because right. the way we're designed and programmed, we're always living outside. So it's COVID, tomorrow is yeah. another. So we get beat up and that beat right. up, we emotionalize. We, right. we, we bring in every cell of our body. Our body starts moving with that feeling. Yeah, so, uh, it's hard to progress when your whole being is like, ugh, you know, like it's like right. shit, you know, crap is happening to you in the outside yeah. world. But the design is the power. The real power is once right. you learn how to live from inside out by using right. your ment higher mental faculties. Right. Sure. When you start using them to live from inside out and look at all that stuff objectively, like your neighbor would yeah. or your consultant would. Right. Right. Oh, that's a game. That's where your world changes. Yeah. Because now yeah. nothing can, you're unstoppable. I call it right. you're being super. Because at that <laughs> point, nothing yeah. can happen outside world that can control you. You control your right. thoughts. You control your actions. You control your feelings. Once right. you take that control back, man, it's over. Yeah. yeah. No, you're, you're right. And that's, yeah. again, that's something a lot of entrepreneurs, particularly when they're you know younger or, or never really done it. Yeah. Again, you're going to get beat up. I mean, yeah. that's just a given. Yeah. That, that there is no just ambiguity deal with about. it objectively now how do you <laughs> deal with it right yeah. i mean you gotta again if you internalize it too much it'll just tear you down yeah you gotta find a way you know it's the old cliche of you know you gotta be open to love yeah. and 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 then it just kind of you know it's there and it's ready for you whenever whenever you can see it so well, yeah you know what mark it was awesome like always to talk to you my friend as always it was, uh, it was great i'm i'm i told you i'm looking for land in florida so <laughs> 
if you if I'm you come, you yeah <laughs> so yeah i think i, I think I, I have my wife kind of convinced because yesterday she wasn't convinced before right, right. um because she didn't want to leave all the family and stuff here so i just sure. kind of nudged it in there again hey you know remember that mark i was telling you about the 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 gift thing he goes yeah yeah he goes well, he found a, a property or two acre and I started talking. I said, Florida, he goes, oh, but what are you going to do in four hours? Nobody there. I said, well, you know, this and that and we'll come in the winter. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I started, so it, when I said, and all those things when I said it, it was like all of a sudden she's getting comfortable yeah. with the idea, you know, like she's getting more. Well, what, what you have to tell her is that when when it's, you know, 30 degrees below zero where you're at, it's it's still 62 degrees here or something like that. Yeah, so that by yeah. itself should be the selling point. But I mean, but she went know. to Florida. She went to Florida in August before and it oh, was yeah. she couldn't breathe Brutal. and she was getting she yeah. was saying it was so hot. Right. So I said that was hard of summer. Like that's the weather is different in the, in the yeah. winter time. No, it's the irony of it is, of course, you know, everybody else is you know, coming down in the winter time, trying to warm up and all the Floridians are trying to get out of here in August and September. It's just so brutal. Mm -hmm. But I, I like the warmth. I like the heat, the humidity. Yeah, hey, once you're too. down here long enough, it doesn't bother yeah. you as much. I want so. that sweating, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just keep a lot of shirts on you because, you know, when you're going from the house to the car, yeah, you're going to have to take That's warm. true. Yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, we always like to ask our guests before I let you go is what do you feel your inner superpower is that got you to this point? I, I, you know, I, I've been asked questions that are similar to that before. And, and I think the one thing that really I latched onto a lot of years ago was my ability to, to just um, be flexible. Um, I always seem to just be able to instinctually look at something and go, okay, um, this is where it's at today. Where's it going to be tomorrow? And where's it going to be the day after that? And, and as a small business owner, you've, you've got to be nimble. You've got to be quick because you know, the markets change and everything changes around you. And so I've, I've always really, you know, told other people and I've always really tried to keep that in mind to, to be nimble, to really be, you know, again, nothing static in life, man. You've got to be able to see where things are going. It's such an important part of, of being a small business owner. And if you can sort of look down the road and see where things are going, you're going to be there and you're going to do well. And then guess what? It's going to change again and you're going to be there and you're going to do well and all that. So, yeah, I you know being positive is certainly part of it, but nimbleness and and that ability right. to shuffle and jive quickly is is uh, a big part of it as well. Awesome, awesome, Mark. That's amazing. And I again, I really want to thank you. My and pleasure. I, I want to um, I want to wish you tremendous amount of success. You know, because you're genuinely a good person. You know, you're you're doing things to help people. Yeah, which I'm a big fan of. And if you're making someone's career life simpler and yeah. serving at the same time, you know, that's a very yeah. nice mix. And yeah. I hope you go global. I hope you're on the news <laughs> media in a good way. Hey, we're already getting there. Yeah. And uh, you, you, you reach all heights and audience. Please, if you want to connect with uh, Mark, an awesome guy. You know what I mean? He has an open door policy. Uh, yep. Hopefully, I'm just saying that. Oh, yeah. No, no, we do. Okay. Only yeah, time. So, always around. Yeah. So he's, he's there. If you want, if you have anything that you want to implement this in, get in touch with him directly. The information will be in the notes. And we love you, appreciate you, audience. And thank you so much for supporting the show. And we'll see you in the next episode. And Mark, thank you so much. And wish you all the best. Thank you for coming on the show.